Right, let's open our Bibles this morning to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. I want to begin in 19, but I want to take a theme out of, out of 22. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy, if therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. If thine eye be single... Thy whole body shall be full of light. I want to talk about a principle this morning. That if our eye be single, the whole body will be full of light. That if we have the first thing established properly, everything else will fall into place. What I want to talk about this morning is about fruit. Fruit is something that is produced from a proper tree. In the Gospels, Jesus talks about the seed that was planted. And he talked about some that fell on the highway and some fell... Uh, on the rocky ground, some fell among thorns, and then some produced good fruit. The seed that was planted was what was important. The seed, the good seed, fell upon the, the highway or the roadside. And there was no place for it to take root, and the birds came along and just ate it up. But it was good fruit. It was good seed. Some of it fell along the byways and it, it started to grow a little bit. And then after it started having trouble, the sun bore down on it and it didn't get enough water. It just kind of withered and died. But it was still good seed. Then there were some that fell in some decent ground, but there were thorns and, and weeds in it. And it, as it began to grow, it began to really look like it was going to do something. But the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches began to choke it out. But it was still good seed. And then some seed fell on good ground. And it grew. And it prospered and it began to produce. And the fruit that it produced was good fruit. A lot of times today, people are trying to produce good fruit out of bad seed. They've got an idea that should be being produced in churches, but... It's producing seed that is from a bad seed. That's why we put a lot of importance on the message of the kingdom of God and hearing Christ and obeying Him instead of someone just being saved or someone being healed or someone having an encounter with God and hoping that that will produce good fruit. Fruit is what is produced from a good seed. It's not something that you can manufacture. And if it is manufactured, it is synthetic and not real. 
If I held an apple up here that was a real apple, and I had another apple that was synthetic, from this distance, you probably couldn't tell which one that man manufactured or which one was produced by being grown on a proper tree. Being grown from the proper root, grown into a tree, and then created and brought forth into an apple. Man can create one out of plastic or something synthetic and paint it and make it look and feel just like a real one. Which one do you want? Something that man created as a fruit or something that was naturally grown? One is good for you. One is just poison to you maybe. And it certainly isn't any good. The fruit that we need to produce is something that is grown from the root. Made into a tree and then brings forth fruit. The Bible talks a lot about that. That we are to be disciples of Christ and then we produce fruit. Whenever I was still in the world, whenever I was a boy growing up, I saw things that were produced in my life. Things that I did not like. I was consumed with lust. I was consumed with anger. All these things just kept coming out. I was, I would swear. And I would do all kinds of bad things. I would covet I had all of this fruit coming out. And for the longest time, I was like, I just pictured myself as this tree. And I would see this bad fruit growing. And I'd try to shake that fruit. And I'd try to shake that fruit. And it might fall off. But then over here, another one would grow. And I'd start working on that. And two more would pop up over here. And I was trying to shake all this fruit off. Trying to make myself holy. Trying to make myself a good man by just knocking this fruit off so that I would appear like I was a good tree, but I didn't want the bad fruit that was being grown on it. And I just shook and shook and shook, and the more I shook off, two would come in its place somewhere else. And I lived that way, thinking that if I just accepted Jesus into my heart, all of that was just going to start falling off. That if I would just be saved, that everything would be okay. But all this fruit just kept springing up. And I got so frustrated, I just gave up on God. And I just, I just left it. Because there was no power in just having Jesus in my heart or me being saved. I was still producing all this fruit and I couldn't shake it. Whenever I picked up the Bible several years later and I began to study what Jesus taught. You know what? He didn't point out the fruit that was in my life as being the problem. I thought surely when I picked up the Bible, I was just going to read David. You shouldn't lust. It says that, but that's not what he pointed out. He didn't say, David... You shouldn't swear. Says that. That's not what he pointed out. All the things. You shouldn't covet. You shouldn't do all of these things. I thought that I would just pick up the Bible and it said I ought to be a good person. And I ought to go to church. And I ought to try real hard to be good. But I didn't see that. Jesus. And the Holy Spirit, when I read reading the Bible, went right to the root of the problem. 
He wanted my life. Not just uh, synthetic fruit. I tried to hang on good deeds. I tried to hang on righteousness. I tried to hang on evangelism. I tried to hang on all these things. Getting along with everybody. But all it was was synthetic fruit. John the Baptist said, lay the axe at the root of the tree. See, it wasn't the fruit that was the problem. It was the root. The very heart. And whenever I began to read the Bible, Jesus said, the Holy Spirit said, sell what you have and follow me. I was well, no, well, I'll, I'll quit drinking. I'll quit doing all of those things. I'd have been glad to got rid of some of that bad fruit so that I could appear better. But that's not what he wanted. He said, cut down that tree. Die. And you'll have life. Well, Lord, I'll, I'll, I'll quit. No. Die. And you'll have life. Whenever I finally let him put the axe where it belonged, at the root, I was amazed at how that fruit just started dropping off. Just started dropping off. As I focused on the root and my eye became single towards following Jesus, I began to see what Jesus wanted from my life. And I began to lay those things down that were in my grasp to lay down. And then that fruit that was produced, that is part of the flesh, just began to drop off. And it, wasn't, it didn't have the power it did anymore. It didn't have the, the hold on me that it did. It didn't just grow up everywhere like it used to. It just began to fall off. And... Good things began to grow. Good things began to happen. And it began to transform my fruit. The bad started falling off. And good things started growing. Because we got to the root of the problem. And when the root and the tree was cut down. And the new tree from the good seed began to grow, it was natural that good fruit would grow from that tree. The problem with people's lives is they're trying to add good fruit to a rotten tree. Unless you die, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. We're trying to create this synthetic Christian. And we're missing that that tree's got to die so that the real tree can grow. If you have a synthetic Christian, you wind up with a synthetic church. When you've got a synthetic Christian and you have a whole group of synthetic Christians, you have a synthetic church. And it may appear beautiful on the outside, and it might look just right, and it might seem just right, but there's something wrong with it. I don't know how many people I've talked to. They love the plain people. They love the plain churches, but they say, there's something missing. I don't know what it is. I can tell you what it is. It's synthetic. Because people are trying to form themselves into a piece of fruit and expect it to be an edible piece of fruit. When it is nothing but plastic and synthetic or wax or whatever you want to make it out of. And it can appear beautiful. It can look just as fine. You step back from it a little bit and you look at it and it looks just exactly the same. But you get up and start feeling it and looking at it. And 
well, wait a minute, that, there's something there. They're a little different here, but I don't know just what it is. But you take a bite of it, and you know you've bit into something wrong. You know one of them is nothing but dead gloss, and the other one was a live piece of fruit. Whenever people try to produce fruit without taking care of the root, they won't get anything but syntheticism. Something synthetic. It's a big word for me, and I hope I did it right. But it's synthetic. It's not real. It appears it, but it's not. People today are all looking for a fruit in a church. They're looking for a church with this kind of fruit or that kind of fruit. And it don't have that fruit, so they try to produce it. There's people that overlook a fruit tree looking for a piece of fruit. They look right past a tree that's producing fruit looking for a certain kind of fruit. Because they want this particular kind of fruit to be produced. Some people think that they can get that produced, that right fruit, if they've got the right Bible. If we just get the right Bible, that'll, that'll fix the problems. That if we just put our focus on one Bible, and we just know that's the truth and there's nothing about it, then we'll have the right fruit. And it doesn't work. And so they think, well, maybe, maybe, um, maybe we'll get unity. Maybe if we just all come together and we have a bunch of meetings and we just determine what we all want, that that will produce this right fruit. So they begin making all these rules and making these decisions together that we can have unity if we just all come together and agree on the same thing. We can have peace in the church. What uh, Jesus said that he offered peace, but it wasn't the way the world produced peace. I want to ask you, how does the world produce peace? The way I understand it, all the diplomats get together and they all begin to form this formula. Well, I can live with that. I can't live with that. We got to work out this deal. We got to bargain and make a deal. And if we get this deal made, we've got peace. And now we can all be happy. I want to ask you something. Does that ever produce peace in the world or happiness? That's the way the world seeks after peace. Well, I'll give a little of this, you give a little of that, and we'll just have peace. Jesus said, I come to give a peace, not like the world offers, but a real peace. That's the pattern of the world. Well, let me ask you something. What's the pattern in the churches? What's the pattern that the churches are using to produce peace? Don't they come together and have men's meetings? Don't they come together and, well, oh, I just can't go along with that. Well, I, I can't go along with that. Well, wait a minute. Why, why don't we just compromise? We'll just meet in the middle here. We'll just get unity. We'll just set a set of rules and we'll just all abide by them. You might not like this one. I might not. But we'll just be together and we'll have unity. And it looks real good. But it's the same peace that the world is offering. 
It's the same method. It's just as synthetic as a waxed apple. There's no difference. None at all. Real peace and real unity is when men have their eyes focused and their eye is single and fruit is produced by men who have a single eye and they begin to have fellowship together. Not created, not forced, but just fellowship one with another because they're walking in the light. It's not something synthetic. It's something that happens whenever two people began walking in the light and in the same spirit, they're drawn together in unity. Not created, not manufactured, but produced as fruit of being in the same root and the same tree. Jesus said, if you abide in me and I in you, you will produce fruit. He didn't say, you set out for what you want and, we, and then you just put it all together and make it work and you'll have fruit. We produce fruit when the root is fixed and the new seed is planted and the tree grows and it produces that fruit. The fruit of unity comes from brethren walking in the same light. Not because we wear their clothes the same. Not because we all have to wear the same color socks or the same size of covering. It's because we are all walking in the light of the truth. So it's a real peace and a real unity instead of one that's manufactured. It's real instead of synthetic. People try to see that, well, maybe, maybe the answer is evangelism. Yeah, if we can all get together about evangelism and we'll just go preach everywhere and that's going to be the fruit that we're seeking after. So we're going to go there and just be an evangelistic church. And so we all come together about evangelism. We're all about evangelism. And then that'll be what we need. The problem is that's synthetic. We have evangelism because we have a message that we want the world to hear. Not because we're trying to create evangelism. It's because we want to tell people about the kingdom of God. We want to tell them about the root needing to be cut down and the real fruit to be began to grow. Our fellowship is not about evangelism. We evangelize because we have the same message of the kingdom of God and we want others to know it. And we have unity because our eye is single towards our king and we want to please him. It's not manufactured it's what is natural and produced. I tried before to put my focus on these things that the church ought to be doing. I tried to put new wine skin or put new wine in an old wine skin and try to help the uh, try to, oh, if we can just correct this church, if we can just reform this church and get everybody excited about evangelism, then this will work. But it didn't work. There was people that were getting excited about it. And it started stretching the old wine skin. And it had to be poured out before it blew it up.
But if the root of the problem would have been right in the first place, evangelism would have already been there. If we try to manufacture it, that's one of the things I had to learn. That you can't change just the fruit. You've got to get to the root of the problem. And I think that's what Christ was talking about. People trying to create the situation where the fruit's there on a bad tree. You get the tree right. You get the focus right. You get the heart. You get the eye single. And this fruit will grow. There's people trying to go around the country trying to bring people together that want to live in a commune. Now, I've changed my terms. I used to call it community, but it's not community. It's a commune. People, oh, if we just get together and we just all live together in a commune and talk about Jesus, everything will be just great. So we try to manufacture this of people that want to live in a commune and all of our focus is on living in a commune and everything will just be wonderful. It's synthetic. We have community here. Because our eye is single and we want to share with others. We want to help each other. We want to lift up the struggling one. Not because we've just all come together and decided to live that way. It's because our message and our focus is what's, or what's coming out of our heart is being produced. People selling things and seeing others have need and distributing to them. It isn't something we tried to create. We didn't set out to create that. But it's a fruit of that. Well, if we just give away everything and every one of us decide to live in poverty, that'll fix it. That'll take care of it. Let's just all live in poverty. And then we'll have the right fruit. The Buddhist monks tried that. The Catholic monks try that. Does it produce the right fruit or is it just synthetic? But when you set your eye on Christ and His kingdom, wealth doesn't mean anything to you anymore. That's not where your heart is anymore. Your eye is single. And so it begins to produce people who are able to live without anything and they don't care. But that wasn't the fruit that was set out for. We set our eye on the king. And that's the fruits that are produced. If you try to regulate how rich a church is going to be. Or how, who can have this much. Or we're going to set a limit up here. All you're doing is trying to make a fruit. Get the root right. And the fruit will be produced that you want. People are trying to correct this thing with their theology. If we have just the right theology, or we write the right books about these things, or we sell the right tapes talking about these things, that that'll produce what we need. We'll just change people's minds about how they think. We'll just slowly, gradually lead them into these right teachings. But it's synthetic. You'll have better looking apple it might be polished you might even paint a little wormhole in it in your synthetic apple to make it look just right and real but when you bite into it it's still wax you've got to die to enter this kingdom many people think that you've got to have the gifts yeah, if I get the gifts, if I can talk in tongues, I know I'll have this kingdom. I'll know then that I've got the fruit. Many people think, well, oh, if I can just have the gift of healing, then I'll know it. We'll just set our eyes on those things. 
And that will be the fruit of that we're knowing what, that we're doing what's right. There's all kinds of things. People try to teach the Bible. We'll just give out Bible courses and spread them out all over the world. I've tried to put my finger on it. I've talked to people that have been on these Bible courses. And it doesn't produce the fruit. There's thousands of them that take Bible courses and do Bible studies. But it isn't producing fruit. I've called it sterile. It's so sterile that there's no life in it. But I think it's synthetic is the problem. It's trying to change people's ideas of how they study the Bible and get them the right theology. That's not what we need. The message is the kingdom of God and it preached and passed on from faith to faith. And just like a little bit of leaven, you keep passing it on and it'll pretty soon the whole lump will be leavened. The answer isn't in in those things. The answer isn't in the fruit. The fruit is produced whenever the eye is single. When it's centered on Christ. And dying to ourselves. And living. Being. What we're supposed to be. We try to. Set up programs. We try to set up. Youth groups. To help our youth. Grow. Get their focus single on Christ and they won't need those things. And if they don't like it, let them go. We don't want a synthetic fruit. We want men and women in the church. We want to pass on something real. We don't want to just pass on the next the tradition. We want to pass on a real root with a real tree that grows real fruit. Not something that we just have to form and guard and protect. If we can't stand alone, you won't stand. We want men and women, young men and women to choose to follow Christ. All by themselves. Not just form into the body. We want them to be a disciple of Christ. So that they have something worth passing on. Not just something they've grown into synthetically. Haman, in the Bible, tried to create the situation he wanted. He tried to fix it where everything was just right. He tried to create the situation where those people that were a pest to him would be destroyed and he would become the king. Mordecai just was. He heard about people attacking the king and he reported it. And the king was saved and delivered. He didn't try to manufacture a situation. He just was faithful where he was at. Haman wound up getting hanged on his own gallows that he had created for Mordecai. Mordecai just was And he was exalted. That's the difference between synthetic fruit and real fruit. Synthetic fruit tries to produce something. Tries to create something. Real fruit is produced from the root. Get your eyes single. You follow Christ. You be what you need to be. Right where you're at. Get rid of things that are hindering you. You be what you need to be. 
you follow Christ. And as you follow Christ, you'll find others who you can have fellowship with. And it's real. It's not a created thing. Our fellowship can't be created because we don't like that group or we don't like this group. Those things bring us together for a little while. But they'll all fall apart. Everyone's looking for the next exciting thing that's going to help fix my Christianity. People have their faith in someone producing. They have their faith in a church. They have their faith in something other than having their eyes single. They have their faith. And so then when the church begins to fall apart, it just crushes them. And they begin to even question whether there is a God. They had their faith in the wrong place. They didn't have their eyes single. They run from here and run from there looking for this perfect fruit instead of to the root of the problem. People are afraid to, to uh, follow someone. They're afraid to have someone that's strong. Because they might be deceived. You get your heart right. And you can follow a strong person. You can submit. You can walk in the light. Whenever your heart is right. But when your heart's not right, you're going to be afraid. You're going to be afraid of somebody doing something. Somebody out there being a leader. And so you're going to say, oh, I can't, I can't trust that church structure. Because it's not just structured just the way the Bible says it ought to be. There's, there's something just... We just had an, met a man just last weekend that had moved to a church that doesn't even have an ordained leader in it. But he was criticizing us because we didn't have two bishops. He was looking for a fruit, trying to create a perfect fruit to make the situation right. Instead of walking in what he had. If you're off by yourself somewhere. You be faithful where you're at. Don't sit there and wait. Until the situation's perfect. Before you can commit to it. Walk in the light. And you will begin to have fellowship with others. It might not be the ideal situation. It might be 2,000 miles away. But there's still fellowship there. And there's still kinship. Walk in that light. Let God grow the tree. And the fruit will produce. You be faithful. It was 15 years before we started meeting here like this. We thought we were all alone. And we were at times. But we kept on following Christ. Following His way. All by ourselves. Letting God mature the tree. You know it takes some trees. 10 or 15 years before they'll start growing acorns. Or start growing fruit. We've allowed that mentality. This microwave mentality. To enter into church. It takes time to mature. It takes time to grow. Get your heart and your eye single. And you walk in that light. Whenever you're walking in that light, 
You can help someone that isn't where you're at. You don't have to criticize them and keep them from you because they're unholy. You can walk and work right in the middle of them if your eye is single. You can be in a bad situation and still just go through it because your eye is single. Whenever we get our eyes single, we don't have to worry about someone ahead of us or above us feeling guilty because we're not where they're at. We just keep walking. You see someone up the mountain, the only way you're going to get there is to keep walking on the path you're on. If you get envious of them being up there, well, I'm not walking that path. He did. There's another path. Or if you start looking down there, they're, I'm way up here and they're way down there. I think I'll set some rocks in the path. So I don't want them following me. They might contaminate me. You holler up whenever your eye is single. You say, hey, I'm coming. I'll be there. Or you say, here, here's a rope. I'll clean up the path. You come on. Let's go. You don't set a bunch of rules set yourself in the middle of it and say well you're not in this set you're not here you can't be a part you keep your eyes single and you can follow someone ahead of you and you can help someone below you keep your eyes single the man stumbles ahead of you I'm going on anyway the man stumbles below you or even passes you I'm going on anyway. My eye is single. If your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. Get the kingdom of God. Get Christ. That's our message to the world. The world knows how to be saved. Look at the fruit it's producing. People are trying to seek after a certain fruit. And it all ends in calamity. Get your eye single on the kingdom of God. And your whole body will be full of light. May the Lord add his blessings to his word. You want to have anything you'd like to share? I was thinking about that and after the father for the age of the perfect father and the perfect. How do you repurpose this up and you focus in on that as your single focus and you strive and you earn and do what you need to do to be perfect as a single minded thought you do. Amen. You learn to be perfect by focusing in on something. I, whenever I was in the world, I was going to be, I had studied real estate. I had apartments and houses. So I wanted to know more about it. One of the things they taught me, they said, if you will study real estate for one year, you'll be an expert in it. If you'll just study this one thing for a year, you'll become an expert. And I've learned that in anything you do, if you keep your eye single and you focus on that, you will eventually become an expert in it. If you keep your eye single on Christ, you'll be perfect like He asked us to be. It may be a long journey, and it won't be completed until we die, or He comes and gets us. But you'll be perfect. Amen.
blessed thought. Right. Amen. That's Jesus' parable. The good seed. It didn't grow. And the good seed was choked out. We want this instant gospel that it's just got to be perfect or it ain't nothing. Or it ain't right. Seek the fruit, amen. Or seek the root. And what what is the church today? What is called the church are those who are able to grow up amongst thorns and amongst the worries of the world and on the hard road. And in real life, when you throw out a good seed, it won't grow, just like Jesus said. But you know what will grow in there? It's the weed seeds. That's the only thing that really does grow in those areas. Mm -hmm. are the wheat seeds and you have some I mean you have wild fruit trees that are really just junk but they have some of the characteristics and they'll grow up and everything that's an interesting idea there but the good seed it, it, it can be choked out but these bad wheat seeds they thrive in that environment Amen. and that's why 75% of Americans Christians it's just bad seed right Well, we'll have fellowship supper at 6 o'clock tonight, communion. We'll come back. Anyone else have anything you want to share? <laughs>